Oscar. We're now joined by John Heideskoff. He's foreign exchange strategist at Danske Bank. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, there has been quite a lot of concern in the last couple of days about this Dubai debt crisis. First of all, how concerned are you about this? Is this going to spread? Is this a signal of worse things to come? Well, the Dubai debt concerns have definitely dominated uh, trading last week. I must say I'm less concerned uh, here this Monday than I was at Friday because over the weekend we have received uh, a statement from, from the United Arab uh, Emirates uh, Central Bank saying that they will stand behind local banks and also ensure liquidity. But I must say that we haven't done nothing in, sol in solving the solvency crisis uh, that obviously uh, is in Dubai. And we still have... Uh, an ongoing issue with this uh, 59 billion US dollars in debt uh, that Dubai has uh, seeked the uh, delays of, of, of paying. So um, I must say I'm, I'm a little less concerned, but uh, there are still some issues out there that needs to be solved. Uh, John, if we do look at today's prices, it does seem that there's a little bit less risk aversion. Does it mean that the yen and the dollar would continue to strengthen in coming days? I would uh, be very careful to treat the yen and the dollar as, uh, as uh, reacting as one currency. Uh, we still have the dollar-yen trading at very, very low levels. Uh, also, uh, as you talked about earlier, we have no lower bound in dollar-yen as we thought previously because we thought that the Bank of Japan would step in and intervene if dollar-yen came too low. And now we simply don't know when the Bank of Japan will step in. And it's also obvious uh, for us and many other analysts that uh, relative rates uh, in recent months have favored the yen versus the dollar. However, looking forward, uh, we think that the dollar will lose this game uh, against the euro at least. Uh, we're also seeing already by now that the euro dollar has uh, come back uh, above 150, now trading 150.50. Uh, we think that move is uh, very much in line with uh, fundamentals. Also, the technical picture suggests that uh, we should see higher levels in euro dollar. We still have a very, very high degree of correlation between global equities and euro dollar. Uh, uh, John, almost it's approximately interesting. 70%. You're Sorry. also saying no. You're also saying that, for example, it's foreign exchange specifics that will drive these foreign exchange markets in 2010, as opposed to 2009, where it's this big, big global factors that have been driving the currencies. Well, global global factors have definitely been uh, very much determinant for for FX in 2009. We think that will fade in 2010. Uh, it's likely that more local uh, factors will drive currencies and also relative rates will become much more uh, important for, for FX going forward. But for December at least, we think that the global picture will be dominating. We think that the high degree of correlation between uh, FX and equities will uh, remain in place also as long as uh, liquidity is, is, so, um, is so rich and uh, rates are so low in in the US. We, th we simply have this uh, global carry trade going on and we think it will continue in at, at least into uh, the first part of 2010. So this gl global carry trade environment, John, is just becoming more attractive? It is uh, still very much attractive. Uh, however, it's likely that uh, volatility will spike a little bit here in December. Uh, we normally see that liquidity uh, dries out and uh, commercial flows are much more uh, absent uh, than, for example, in, in spring and in the fall. So we are a little bit worried that we'll see some very, very uh, erratic movements in the FX markets here in December. John, thank you so much for that. John Heideskoff there from Danske Bank.